Now that we formed our hypotheses, made a prediction and established our standard of evidence, and developed our test statistic, it's time that we evaluate whether we believe we've upheld or rejected the null hypothesis. That is, have we obtained a sample that leads us to believe the null hypothesis is not a good explanation for the difference we obtained? Remember, the null hypothesis simply states that the difference we saw from our sample versus the population, assuming the null is true, is due simply to sampling error. So in this stage, it's just a question of, do we believe still that sampling error alone is the reason for the difference we see? And to do this, all we're trying to do is place our sample in this distribution of sample means. Did we get a sample that exceeded our standard of evidence? And by that I mean a sample that landed us in the critical region. Now since I drew out the scale in terms of X bar units, we can already see where our sample will land us. It'll land us right here at a mean of 106 or a Z sub X bar, our test statistic, at 1.6. So we can already see that we haven't landed our sample mean in the critical region, which in our case is akin to saying that our sample is not extreme enough based on our standard of evidence we established to reject the null hypothesis as reasonable. In other words, it's perfectly reasonable that sampling error alone could have returned us our sample mean. Now this isn't saying that the null hypothesis is true. It's simply saying we do not yet have evidence enough to reject as reasonable the null hypothesis as the explanation for that difference. Now I want you to see that there is another way we could have decided whether we landed ourselves in the critical region, in a way that's going to be more convenient going forward since we'll work with many different types of test statistics. And the way we can do this is by using that proportion more extreme value. Remember, a p-value is just a way of describing how extreme a score is in a distribution, which is exactly what we're trying to do here. And remember, a p-value is just the proportion of a distribution more extreme than a given score. We had two varieties, that one-tailed p-value, the proportion more extreme in one tail, and we had the two-tailed p-value, the proportion of a distribution more extreme in both tails. Now in this case, if I were to ask you what the p-value is for our z sub x bar, for that z sub x bar of 1.6, and I wanted to know what the two-tailed p-value is, do you think our two-tailed p-value is more or less than our alpha level? Our alpha level is 0.05, so numerically, is our p-value greater than 0.05, or is our p-value less than 